Hello and welcome to this Learn Learn Python tutorial. This tutorial is the For Loops Advanced tutorial, the second tutorial about For Loops. If you haven't watched it already, you should go and watch the beginner's tutorial first. So, quick recap. In the beginner's tutorial, we showed you how you could use for i in range, uh, which, uh, which would repeat something a certain number of times. So, for instance, here it will repeat 20 times. And in this nice simple example, it will merely repeat, no, repeat hello world 20 times. So if we run the module and then save it using whatever you use, you could say here it's just printed hello world 20 times. And you don't have to do that. Um, you could get it to print i itself, which would print i starts at zero and then increments 20 times. So starting at 0, 20 times, it would end at 19. So if we run that, there you go, 0 all the way through to 19. Good. So that was the beginner's tutorial and a few other little bits and bats. But now we're going to expand on that a bit. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's ask the user how many times they want to repeat. So what we can do here is you say repeat equals input enter a whole number there we go so the, and once they've entered the whole number we will take the uh, text that they've entered and we will uh, convert it to an integer we'll cast it as an integer so now slightly different and let's change that to repeat there so this time around uh, it's not going to be a set number of times but it's going to repeat it depending on how many times the user enters so this time if we run it click ok it should now ask oops where's that just gone where's that gone there we go just down there so enter a whole number and if i put five it hopefully should count zero one two three four good okay so there you go so there's one of the first improvements to four loops uh, another thing we can do here is we can skip a particular time so what we can do here is before we print i we can say okay uh, option equals inputs and just put skip or print skip or print question mark and if the option equals equals print so if the option equals print then we will merely print i uh, otherwise, if the option equals equals skip, what we will do is we will simply skip that particular number. And the way we skip one time in a loop is we use the continue phrase. So there we go. So here, I now have two options. If you type in print, uh, then it will print the number that you've uh, on that particular time round. Otherwise, it will simply skip it using continue. Continue means just ignore all the rest of the code after here in the loop and just go back up to the top of the loop for the next time round. So there you go. For now, I run it. So let's say we do whole number six, skip or print. If I type in print, it will print the number. Let's do that again. It will keep printing. Do that again. And if I type in skip this time round, let's just move that box over there a bit in the way of my code. If I type in skip, it will simply skip that number. And now if I type in print, it should show you, there we go, it has skipped number three. Good, so that's working fine. So to skip one time in the loop, you use the continue. And the next one we can show you is option equals equals exit the loop. Okay, so skip or print, and this time we're going to do skip, print, or uh, exit. Um, in fact, actually, what we'll do, there you go, that's okay. And in order to exit the loop, we need to break out of the loop. There you go. So if the option is skip, we're going to call continue, which will go back up to the top of the loop and go through the next, uh, the next number of the loop. And if the option is exit, then we're going to simply break out of the loop. And what we'll do here is I'll just print goodbye. There we go. And that will that will that will only execute after the loop has broken or 
after the loop has gone through all the iterations. So the way we know that this isn't in the loop anymore is because this code here is not indented. Anything that's indented on this line is part of the loop, uh, but anything that's not indented afterwards, that's after the loop. So now if you run the code, we've got three options. Let's do uh, let's do 20. So skip, print, let's do print. Yep, yeah, it's printing, print, print. If we want to skip this time, we'll do skip. And now let's go on, but let's skip two lots. There you go. And now we're up to number five. And if we do exit, it will call break and it will break out of the loop. Goodbye. Um, you don't always use continue or break in for loops. Generally, you don't use them, but they are quite useful if you need them. And there we go. So that's the first part of the advanced tutorial using continue and break. The next part of the advanced tutorial is focusing on using for loops with lists. So for instance here, let's say we've got a list of um, presents that you want to spend money on. So let's say here we go, um, let's have a look, presents equals an empty list of presents. And in fact, we'll call this present costs actually. Here we go, present prices. So the idea being is that um, let's say you're going to buy presents for a birthday, but you need to keep track on the prices of the presents. So here, what we can do here is we can do for i in range 5. There we go. So let's say here that your um, whoever it is um, has said to you that, okay, you're allowed to buy five presents for the, um, for the birthday. There you go. So for i range five, and then uh, price equals input. How much did this present cost? There we go. So we ask the user to enter how much that present costs, um, and we'll do it in whole pounds. In fact, no, we'll do it as um, we could do it as a float, uh, so you can use decimal places. Uh, how much does the present cost in pounds? There you go. So, and then what we can do now is we can say price equals float price. So, and what that will do is it will take whatever they've entered as a price and convert it to a floating point decimal number, uh, a, a number with a, a decimal place in it. Good, so we've got the price for that particular present, and what we'll do now is we're going to uh, we're going to add this price to the list of present prices. So all we do now is we do, oops, let's do that properly, in camel case, present prices dot append, and we will do price. There we go, present prices dot append price, there we go. And what that will now do is it will take whatever they've just entered as their price and add it to that list of prices, that present prices. So at the end here, what we could do is we can print out present prices now, and it will allow us to keep adding to that list five times. So let's just run that now and let's see if that works. There you go. How much did the present cost in five? 5.25, There you go. And as you can see here, after the loop, each time we're through the loop, it keeps adding to this list. And now you've got a list of five prices in there. So that's good. But what can we do to improve this? Well, there's three things we can do. First of all, we can total up the list. The list, that's something we do quite common. Uh, and that's really easy. All we have to do here is print total. Uh, there we go. So that's going to say the to uh, total. And then what we do is we use the sum function on the present prices list. And that now will print, uh, it will take each of those prices that we just got here and it will uh, add them up. So that's really useful. What we can also do here is we can do the um, the max, the highest price, highest price present. Uh, we can use the max function on that. There 
There we go. And we could do the same for the lowest price present. Just lowest. And that, for instead of using max, this time we use the min, which is great. And we could also do the average price for a present. Average price. This one is a little bit more complicated because there's no average function built into Python. So we've got to be a little bit more clever. Uh, as you know, the um, to get the average price or to get the mean average price of a present, we would add up all of these items together. Uh, which we could use do using the sum function but then we have to divide it by the length of that list so here there are one two three four five now at the moment we know here that there's five items in our list but that might not always be the case so sometimes we want to find the length of the list and we can do that using the len function here uh, which is len brackets and then the name of the list that you want to know how many items there are and oops, I'll just try that again. And then brackets present prices. That's why. Right. And there you go. That returns the the length of the list, which in this case is five. So all we have to do here is we say, okay, um, add up the add up each of the prices. So some present. Prices, there you go, and divide by the length of the list. Let's see if that works, shall we? And there we go. So, so now here we've got quite a few different functions that we can use in uh, in conjunction with for loop. Let's have a quick go. Run that. How much is present cost in pounds? Let's say. £4.50, £2.50, £7, £2.80, and 2 There you go. So here we go. We've got the total is £8.80, highest price is 7 lowest 2 and the average price is 7.6. Okay. Um, if we want to... Um, if we want to make that a little bit prettier, what we could do here is we could use the round function. Uh, and we'll take that and we'll put all of that inside of there. There we go. And now what it should do is it should take that calculation there and round it to two uh, significant figures, I think, or decimal places, I can't remember which. Let's find out now. Let's run that and see which one it does. So, four, five, six, four, two, two. There you go. So, yeah, it rounds it to two significant figures. Average price, 3.5. So, if you want it to uh, three, um, three significant figures or four, you could just change that. There you go. So, that's uh, most of the advanced tutorial sorted. I'm now just going to show you one more thing that is useful in Python. So let's just get rid of that. Let's say, for instance, you want to print out all of the times tables. Um, now, obviously, you've got like 1 times 1 equals 2, 2 times, and then 1 times 2 equals 2, and then you can go 1 times 3, and then you'd have to do it for the 2 times table, and then the 3 times table, and the 4, and the 5, and the 6 etc etc now that's going to be a problem using a standard um, for loop because with standard for loop um, it would be quite useful for i in range let's say 10 and you could do print uh, let's have a look i times i but that's not going to work fully um, Let's just, in fact, let me just show you that here. I, what is that? So that'll be I. Times I. Equals. And then it'll be I times I. I. Times I. Let's just try that. Equals I times I. So now if you run that. 
What we're wanting to get here is we want 1 times 1 equals 1, 1 times 2 equals 2, and then do the 2 times table and 3 times table. We have standard for loop. We're not going to get that because all it's going to do is it's only going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you're only going to get 1 naught times naught, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. You're not going to get all of the possibilities. All If there's 91, um, if there's 9 times 9, then that's going to be uh, 81 different possibilities. You're not going to get them all. So a single, uh, a single for loop isn't going to work. What you need to do, if you're trying to do something where it's doing slightly more complicated, is you need to do a nested for loop. And this is a for loop inside of a for loop. So here, let me just do num1, range 10, and then we'll do for num2 in range 10. There we go. And let's just print num1. Two. Now, there we go. So now if you run this one, this is what we really want. There you go. So now what it's given us is it's given us all of the combinations that we need. Uh, we've actually got the naught times table as well, which is there. Which is, but if you ignore the naught times uh, table here, in fact, actually let's just change that slightly. Let's go 1, 11. If we're going to do 1 to 10 times table, there you go. So here... It's got all of the combinations that we need. So if we go back up to the top, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, 1 times 5, 1 times 6, 1 times 7, etc, etc. And then once we've finished all the 1s, then we move on to the 2 times table, and then the 3 times, and the 4 times table, etc. So, how's that working? Well, uh, let me just show you here. Uh, number 1... Let's just times num2 comma equals uh, num1 times num2. So if just run that again, let's make sure that's working how we need it. There you go. So now it's done the full 10 uh, times tables, 1 times 1 equals 1, 2 times 1 equals 2, 3 times, all the way through for all of the possibilities. So how is that working? Well, let me show you. Here we go. So if we go to, uh, I'll put this link on, um, it's a line by line interpreter. Uh, I'll put this link on the YouTube video. Um, but if you go to pythontutor.com and go to visualize, and then go to visualize execution here, this option, paste your code in, you go to visualize execution. What you'll see here is, this is exactly what's happening. You've got your outer for loop here, the first one, your inner for loop here, which is the second one, and then these numbers here. And if you watch the program, watch here with this bit here, you can see that what it does is it goes, okay, there's number one, moves on to the next line of code, sets number two. Then it prints out the code, and then it goes back to the top of the inner for loop, the one that's pushed in, indented effectively. It's gone in twice now. And now you can see it keeps going back in that inner for loop, and it does it 10 times, because you said range uh, 1 to 11, which is 10 times. And that inner number 1 and 2 keeps changing until we get to the end of our for loop here. 9 times 9 is 9, 10 times, and then it drops back to the outer for loop, which then increments the number 1, goes from 1 to 2, and then we start going back in our inner for loop again. And if we watch this here, our program, you'll, keep, you'll see how it keeps going inside of the inner loop, and then every so often it pops back out to get the next number. Here we go, pop out. There you go, and then back in again. So that's what's known as a nested for loop. Um, and if you're wanting to do options like times tables or things like that, and there's different things, um, then you're going to want to use that. But that was just something a little bit more advanced on the for loops. Okay, there you go. There's your advanced for loops tutorial. I hope that's useful. Uh, leave me a comment if you want anything changing or you need more help. Thank you very much.